Hi, beautiful ones. Today I'm going to be talking about just a little bit of a life update as well as hiatal hernia and gastritis, um, specifically what I have been going through over the last three months. And some of these tips, they may be able to help you if you have received that type of diagnosis. For starters, um, the symptoms that I was having, um, bloating, a lot of bloating, and it's been happening over the last two years, but I just noticed this year it has been getting a little bit worse. However, um, it got really worse. I actually um, paid for a GI MAP test and I hired a functional nutritionalist. And I talk on here all the time and I tell my friends, I tell my family, if you can go see a naturopathic doctor or a functional medicine doctor because they are they can get to the root cause of the issues that you're having instead of treating everything superficial on surface level. So I said, you know what, even if I am a health coach, sometimes I just need a little help. I need some answers. I need to know what is going on. So I hired a young lady. I actually found her on Instagram and I'm not here to bash anyone. I will not tell you who she is, but the problem is, is that, oh gosh, how can I say it? She looked at my results and I thought the entire amount that I paid for to read my GI map results also included, well, how should I be eating? Anyhow, when she read the results, she said, you know, um, you know, there's some pathogens and I was low on acromancia. Acromancia, I've never heard of this strain of bacteria, but that was the main thing. And I said, okay, so she recommended to take beef liver um, pills as a multivitamin. And I, I just didn't understand why. So I didn't take that, but I took acromancia and she said also HCL. So I ordered HCL. And I started taking it and I would hear how some people would say that their symptoms started improving, but mine seemed like it was worse. There was one particular night I'm laying down, I'm, I'm sleeping and I wake up and I know this is too much information right now, TMO, but TMI or you know what I mean. And I woke up and it felt so weird. It wasn't a situation where as it was acid reflux because I don't have acid reflux like that. I know some people that say when they have acid reflux, how it feels, it feels like acid's coming up and it feels up in your mouth. My, it was just different. I felt it a little bit, but that this one particular night, I said, what is going on? I was swallow and it just felt so weird here. I, it's so hard to explain that I seriously started praying. I said, God, what is happening to me? What is going on? So when I had to go and uh, do a bowel movement, this is like one or two o'clock at night, but I do remember having a watermelon. So I don't know if that watermelon was bad. Um, when I did go to the GI doctor, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. He did say that it could be, what do you call it? Eating a bad fruit, some type of virus that can also cause this. But after I eliminate it, I was okay. I was okay, but it happened to me one other time. So I was doing some reading and I have to sleep elevated now. Th that, this is my life over the last three months, elevated. Then I found out I have a sleep apnea, but that's, we, we, we just, I'm gonna stick to one thing right now. <laughs> Woo! Let me tell you, this is it's something else when it's back to back things and you eat healthy. It's it's a little discouraging. So, anyhow, it's just my stomach was not getting right. It just wasn't right at all. So I reached out to the functional medicine and she said she tried to get more money from me. And I said, How should I be eating? Maybe it's the acromancia just not agreeing with my gut. What What is going on? <laughs> and I did research. I, I said, maybe I should add in more cranberry or more, uh, what else has acromancia? It's cranberries and pomegranate. So I, I started adding in some of those and I stopped taking the HCL. I really think the HCL, the hydro, hydrochloric acid, and that helps to 
increase your stomach acid. And sometimes this is a problem that most of us may be having. So fast forward, things just started to get worse. I would not feel hungry in the morning. And, and also when I looked at the results and I said, you know what, let me go online and on YouTube and find maybe a doctor, a naturopathic doctor, a functional medicine doctor, not a nutritionalist, not to knock nutritionalists, but I need some help right now. And I went page to page and I, I don't, I'm looking around, I'm like, gosh, I wish I had my um, results. But it's a GI map, it, it does stool testing and it just lets you know any pathogens, bacteria, overgrowth, uh, low stomach acid, you know, all of those things, any um, inflammation that's going on in the stomach. So I went online, uh, hold on, let me go back. Doop, doop. <laughs> so I went, I said, you know what? And I don't, you know, some of y'all that watch my, my YouTube, you really don't like going to the doctor, but I recommend please go to the doctor. It was a point in time that when I would work out and I would breathe right here, I was like, what's happening? It was just a little pain right above my um, collarbone. I said, what's going on? Um, and then when I would try and work out because I like that high intensity workout, it challenges me, burns more calories and I just couldn't do it. So I found myself out of breath. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. Um, but then there was one particular time I was at work and mind you, at this time I was eating three meals per day. I made sure I had, because I just don't like eating all the time, three meals and they're big meals and all this protein and so forth. And I just remember when I would be at work, oh my gosh, when I would swallow, I just felt so dehydrated. And I had this big pink gallon of water. And on one of my videos, I think I showed y'all, you know, how much water I drink. So I had the water right? And I'm drinking water throughout the day. And I even had electrolytes. I did all the things I was supposed to do. And when I got off, so I'm driving home and I had to pull over. It was extreme thirst. I, I'm like, I've never had to do this in my entire life. I was just thirsty. And sometimes extreme thirst. I did the process of elimination doing all these bl this blood work. Uh, I don't have uh, diabetes. Um, blood sugar issues. My A1C was 5.1, I believe 5.1 or 5.2, which is okay. My glucose. But anyhow, I found myself going in and out of the emergency room. I'm going to, I went into urgent care and I'm over here, you know, urgent cares, no, the emergency room. So urgent care is like a $50 copay, but the emergency room is 600. So I had EKG blood work and they, come back. Everything is fine. So I'm like, what is this? Then after a while, it got worse. So I would eat my food, my meal prep that I will always eat. And one night I was on my bed, I was reading. And when I was swallowing, sure, I was swallowing and it felt like something was just stuck right here. And at that moment, and I'm like, I'm praying. I say, oh God, forgive me. I don't want to think negative. It was like the first thing that comes in your mind. If you guys watch my video about my breast lump, you already know the thoughts that come in your mind. And then I know one lady I used to work with, she was a coworker and she was telling me, she said, you know, before she found out she had throat cancer and she beat it, but then she was lived many years later and she passed away. So God was good. She had went to, what is it? Um, somewhere in Florida, um, hypocrisies, I believe. It's some natural and they teach you how to make your stuff. And that actually extended her life for a long time because it's been a while since I've worked in that department. I just found out about, gosh, a year and a half ago, she passed away. So she lived a long life by changing the way that she eats. But anyhow, so I'm thinking like, I remember I was in the shower, I was crying. I was like, God, how can this happen to me again? It's like another scare. Of course you're going to be scared because, you know, cancer, I'm seeing from left to right all over the place that people is either the breast cancer, you having this cancer, that cancer. I even heard on a Facebook, there's a Facebook friend, her brother has a very rare throat type of cancer. 
And I said, oh God, and I don't like to think negative. I was talking to my son. I was telling him, I said, Lorenzo, you know, you're on my account. You know, you start thinking those ways. And these are things that you, it, it, it gives you awareness too, that you also have to make sure things are right in your life if something were to happen. But I said, you know what, Lord, and I, I believe in God can heal. I said, what is going on with me? Um, I also have gained weight. I'm very sad about that which is very odd because I haven't been eating that much. But anyhow, I said I had to go and see my primary care, in which I didn't see him. I had to see another one because my primary care, he actually was booked up until December, which we're in December now. And so I had to see somebody. Um, there's one particular doctor. I tried to talk to him and tell him. He was like, oh, you know, that's a gray area. We don't want to hear anything about um, the GI maps and all of this. And I'm like... I just got quiet. I said, okay. I said, I don't ever want to see this man again. But anyhow, um, I did see a primary care. She actually was helpful, although she don't know that particular area. It's just surface, but she was open and willing. She said, okay, we're going to um, give you a referral to a cardiologist and to a GI doctor. And I was so afraid and, you know, you have to go and get the appointment first and then schedule whatever like procedure. So I had the stress test with the cardiologist and everything um, was fine. It was like everything looks good. I had the ectocardiogram. That was good. The EKG, that was good. Um, I also, because I told you this was happening over the year, um, I did see a cardiologist sometime in February of this year, which, was, which is 2023. And the, I, I had, what was it, a halter monitor. And that was fine. Because back then I was having heart palpitations too. Now let's, to let you know that when you have um, hormonal imbalances or your progesterone is low, you will have uh, heart palpitations. But just something just wasn't right. <laughs> it just wasn't right. So I went to the cardiologist. Everything came back fine, normal, you have a healthy heart. I'm like, well, what's wrong with me? Why does it feel like food is coming up, heart palpitations? But as I began to pray, this symptom had went away, it took a while, and God kept telling me, the Holy Spirit kept telling me, it, it's a virus I'm dealing with. And something told me, which was a, the Holy Spirit, look online at hiatal hernia. And I was like, no, that ain't me. And I'm just looking at YouTube videos. I was like, okay, what, you know, whatever. So I was so afraid. I had, uh, I went to the GI and I had the procedure done where they put the camera down your throat and um, they look at your stomach. They look at everything that's going on. And I remember I, was, I wasn't afraid. I felt a calmness um, over me. I said, Lord, I'm um, I've never had this done. It's kind of freaky. Right. And so I'm laying down on my left. They put this thing on your mouth to go. And I'm like, I'm just not going to think about it. And I remember the anesthesi anesthesiologist was right on my right side. He was like, oh, you know, introduce himself. He gave me the, um, y'all, I can't even think of the name. You know what I'm talking about to make me go to sleep, the anesthesia. And, um, <laughs> I was out. Next thing I know, I woke up and I'm out of it. And the nurse was telling me, oh, your doctor had, um, you have hiatal hernia. Okay. And he also said, um, you have got gastritis, which is inflammation. I said, okay. And he moved, um, uh, uh, what is it? I'd be pronouncing stuff wrong. Lord, y'all, I, I'm tongue twisted. Um, pilot, pilot. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he removed that. So I had to schedule a follow-up with him and he explained to me that the hiatal hernia is a medium size. And if it gets worse, he could give me a referral to have um, look into surgery. I'm listening. I said, OK. And the only thing is, I, I like him. He's a younger, cute little Asian guy. OK. And he he was helpful. But you, you have to remember when it comes to anything the natural route, they're not really for it. So in the back of my mind, I said, okay, 
I have this going on. I did the research. Come to find out hiatal hernia can cause where it feels like the food is regurgitating. I've heard more horror stories whereas it feels like the food is just really coming up. But mine is just imagine when you, I'll just say small, uh, uh, eat a date because you know dates are really thick and I would chop them up. So as I'm swallowing, it just feel like it's a little stuck there, it hangs there and then it finally goes down. Over the last week, it actually has gotten better. So um, it just felt like when I would eat food, it would just stay here, but it would be worse with meat. So I had to change my diet. Number one, I'm high energy, okay? And I like fast. When you eat, slow down. That's the only thing that helps. And I'm kind of belching a little bit because I've mostly been eating soup. I'm keeping it honest with y'all. I've mostly been eating soup. Um, I didn't have time to cook. Sometimes you're just worn out because I'm still trying to learn this new diagnosis. Um, and I had uh, Chick-fil-A soup. Their chicken tortilla soup is the bomb. It's really good. And that's how I've been eating. Just more soups and more fish. I can eat shrimp. But the majority, I've really been focusing on veganism. And I had my menstrual cramps have been even more better. And it, even when I have organic grass fed meat and which is chicken, I do miss red meat. I'm very concerned about that because uh, my iron stores are fine, but it's my ferritin that is low. So I started doing more research. I'm like, why HCL didn't work for me? I went back to the exam and here's the thing. In the procedure that was done, the endoscopy that was done, I'm like, I was talking because you get little signs from other people that are in your life. And one female said, did you get checked for H. pylori? And I looked at the results because I was able to see results online first and there was no H. pylori. He didn't, the doctor didn't tell me there was H. pylori. However, it may have been missed. Because on the GI map, it says that I do, it's in the 600s, which is not too bad, but you still want to treat it. You still want to eradicate the, the, the H. pylori. And from my studies, I'm going to hurry up. Slow down eating, lessen your meat. And you have to eradicate. It could be an overgrowth of bad bacteria in the body. And I, that's what I'm thinking. Why It doesn't matter if you eat healthy at all. And what I mean by this is over the years, especially in high school, junior high, I had bad cystic acne. And I would be on antibiotics for a long time. There is some, well, I was on it for a month, two months. I was just ordering it, you know getting new prescriptions for it because I had cystic bad, uh, bad acne so bad, especially on this side. I remember this side. I'm surprised. I have freckles right there, but I am so surprised that it just, it, it's no discolorations there or any pits in the skin. And I, at that time, I eliminated all dairy and that's what helped. But fast forward to my life now that was in my early, my teens, in my twenties and part of my 30s. And then when the big C happened in 2020, um, bronchitis. So I was on antibiotic again. And I think what happened, and I'm pretty sure what happened, and this is all the research I've been doing, and I pretty much I had to be an advocate for myself. Um, unfortunately, uh, my gut lining was it's just destroyed. It didn't matter how good I ate, how much. And the, the Lord was telling me, L-glutamine, L-glutamine, L-glutamine through this whole entire time. And there's like little clues. So I looked at the GI map test again. There is a small amount. So I said, I found a lady. I don't have her name. If you want the name, let me know in the comments. And she's she broke down that entire test. So what I'm taking right now, it's, um, I forgot to bring it while I'm doing this video, but this was impromptu. If you have a certain amount, you do need to treat it. It's very hard to treat. So I am taking a certain strain of a probiotic. It's Saccharomyces or Saccharomyces. It starts with an S, Bilorti. Um, I'll put it in the comments. You can check it out. So what I plan on doing is taking that for two months. 
I'm also taking iron. No one's ever told, they didn't say, oh, go ahead and take iron. Because what's happening is the H. pylori and with me, um, any uh, pathogens or any overgrowth of gut bacteria in the gut, what's happening is it's, it's eating, eating, it's feeding off of my iron. So I'm taking iron, I'm taking the Saccharomyces, Saccharomyces, and of course my B-complex, I started taking that. I only eat meat maybe two times per meat and it's so small. I mean, it's about that size, about even less. I'm so scared. I pretty much eat vegan style. I try to get in, like I, I'm having shakes. I really want to eliminate shakes now um, since there is inflammation um, around my gut, but the healing has gotten so much better. Um, and I asked him, I said, on my left side, when you have, um, what is it? Uh, hiatal hernia. I was like, why well, I have a little irritating dull pain right there. And I said, did you remove anything right there? He was like, no, there wasn't anything in there. So, but sometimes the hiatal hernia can cause that. Even that has gone away since I started adding this powder. Again, I'll find out where I'll put that in the comments too. And this has really been helping with inflammation a lot. So my stomach is much better. The bloating is much better. Um, that pain is, is much better. I don't feel inflamed. You know what I mean? Sometimes we're just eating food that is inflaming us and I don't eat bad. It's just right now, like I would make up some soups. I have a really good soup. I don't know if you guys can see my, I think I have it on one of my shorts and I've been eating on that soup. I need some more recipes with soups. Um, I have recipes, but I need some soups. But all I know right now, I really love Chick-fil-A tortilla soup. Let me know if you have tried it in the comments. It's so good. I absolutely love it. I need that recipe or I could make up my own recipe of a similarity to it. So I take this powder and it has aloe. It has L-glutamine, licorice root. And what else? There's one other thing in there. I don't remember um, what it is and that has been helping. Another thing that eradicates, um, so what I plan on doing, I'm doing my own thing right now because nobody's helping me right now. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to take the probiotic, all right? I want to eradicate it first. We're gonna take the probiotic, I'm gonna take all these things for like two, three months, and then I'm gonna rotate the probiotic and add in more um, bacillus, um, a lacto uh, other strain of bacteria. And then what I'm going to do, I also, I found out that um, flax oil is also another thing that eradicates it too. So I'll put flax oil in my smoothies in the morning. So I've been doing that. What else am I missing? And vitamin C. I take a liquid form of vitamin C because if your body is not, you don't have enough acid, it's very hard for your stomach to break down the food and get the nutrients in there. Um, and another sign that tells you is I noticed my nails have been super dry. Um, I don't get them done. They, it, it's just, yeah. <sighs> this is, it's, as long as it's been going on and from the years I was on antibiotics and everything just being destroyed and I'm over here eating, thinking I'm being healthy and I'm just thank God that my hair, I haven't noticing, noticed any difference with my hair, but mostly resistant weight a little bit. So that could be from my body is just not absorbing the nutrients that it needs to. So I do um, make sure, you know, my stress levels, my thyroid, uh, which I do take maybe three Brazil nuts. And um, so that helps with selenium, help with the thyroid. I should be getting in some more iodine. Um, I kind of went off some things right now because this was a diagnosis that I didn't expect. My whole life changed and it was upsetting. It's depressing, especially if, you know, I come on here and I like to share and give some advice and tips it's, it's, um, I didn't feel well at all. I just, I just didn't feel well. And so that's what I've been pretty much going through. And I just pray for my nails to grow like how they were, but that's a sign right there. You want to look at your nails. If you look at your nails, you want to look into your thyroid. You want to look into your gut health. 
and uh, your hormones as well, your minerals. I started adding in some minerals as well. And, but I try not to do a lot of things, but what I, what's helping right now is eating slow, making sure you, you are chewing 20 to 30 times less meat. Um, I had to eliminate salads, unfortunately, um, just for right now, but raw food, you do want to add in at least raw food, um, one time per day, at least minimum. Uh, but unfortunately when you have any gastritis, hiatal hernia, you want to make sure your food is cooked and more vegetables and find other alternatives for, you don't, I don't believe in the beyond meats all that stuff. The only thing I do like, um, for your protein, um, you have, you know, quinoa, you have, um, you can have some flax seeds for that good fat, chia seeds, you have hemp seeds, uh, lentils, all of that. But the other stuff, when you start getting into beyond meats and packaging, the only thing I do like, and I'm not really fond of tofu as well, but if you like tofu and you're a vegan, you like to eat it, then eat it. But I do um, have tempeh uh, and then I also have, um, what is it, garbanzo beans. Uh, so my diet is pretty boring a little bit until I really learn a little bit more information. Also hyoidal hernia, um, that could be because of gut um, pathogens, bad gut bacteria. That can also be the cause. Another cause is sometimes just stress, eating too much. When you eat too much, you eat too fast. I'm over here belching now, y'all. <laughs> Forgive me, but I, I like to be completely honest with you. This is bad. And then lifting heavy, um, that's another cause. I found myself lifting my 20 pound weights and I'm just, just going at it. Uh, right now, I feel a little bad. I have not been lifting weights. Uh, I maybe... <laughs> Three weeks ago, no, two weeks ago, I did go online and I just used lightweight. I'm just a little freaked out about it. There's certain exercises that you can and you can't do. And um, also, what else, y'all? I'm trying to remember everything. So be careful of lifting heavy, um, making sure you're breathing. Uh, I do have a sit down job. And sometimes with, uh, I wonder if I can turn around. When you're on the computer, you see how I'm hunched over? that can also cause it poor posture yes i was reading poor posture um if you're just not breathing properly um your core is not strong enough in which i found that to be a little odd because i was teaching pilates but you have to be careful with pilates i do know some people that there's a certain type of yoga that they do for me i'm not going to do yoga but you can look into it. and if i do find the type of yoga i'll put it in the comments but I have to be careful with certain moves of Pilates and that is just discouraging. So I'm trying to reach out cause I do like my hip cardio, um, the chest pains, the shortness of breath. I don't have that anymore since I started eating smaller meals throughout the day. And that's what I used to do. I was just trying to condense it cause eating all the time. And when you're at work, it's just, it doesn't bode well at all. It just, you know, um, but I eat smaller meals, less meat, and there's a few, if you do have this problem, um, there is a few YouTubers where they say to push your stomach down and in the morning you drink just a, you know, if you have just a, what is it? Eight ounces of water, or it could be four ounces or eight ounces. And then you do heel drops and then you hold your arms up in the air, or you can hold them here, here, and you're just dropping down about Oh, there's some that say 10 times or 15 times, uh, any jumps, any type of jumps can help bring the stomach down because what's happening is from what I understand is that the stomach is being pushed up into your esophagus. I believe that's what it is. Again, I'm still doing research, but what I have been doing has been helping. I plan on rotating my probiotics once everything is eradicated. Oh, and I want to add, um, mastic gum mastetic gum or mastic gum uh in there i believe i'm pronouncing it wrong but 
and chew on that, that actually is really, really good to help eradicate H. pylori. So it's a lot of us that have H. pylori and we don't know it. Sometimes the doctors miss it. Sometimes the GI map may pick it up. Who knows? Um, next time I test, I may not even have it or I may just have a little bit. Um, our body, if you have a very high stomach acid, it's able to fight that off. But mine has been ruined over the years. And so that was what was happening. Food was coming, you know, eating food and the bacteria was just coming in. So that's what that acid is. So you know when acid burns, just imagine your stomach have that acid and then when you eat, it's able to really break it down and extract the nutrients and kill all the bad bacteria that's in your stomach. And mine has been a little flaky. So this is why this is happening. And this is why some of people, their gut health is destroyed either by antibiotics or how you have been eating. But I believe in miracles. I said a prayer, I said, Lord, you know, give me the authority to heal myself and I am getting better. I can't eat the way that I um, want to eat, but it's fine. It's okay. I am here. I'm alive. And as long as the doctor said, he said, it's not cancerous. Thank you, Jesus. Like this is the second scare. It really is. Um, it's a spiritual warfare, but you know, the devil be trying to take out the Lord's people. No, mm -mm, no, no, mm -mm, I'm not going for it. All right, I wanted to come on and share that long drawn out story for you. What is going on in my life right now? I wanna wish everyone a happy new year. Today is, what's today's date, y'all? That's sad. It is December 30th, 2023. And um, I will see y'all for the next new year. I'm starting another YouTube channel. I'm super excited about that. I'm super excited with the direction things are going for that channel. Um, here, I just want to help you in the areas of health, not just hormones, but just anything with health and anything that I have gone through because I have gone through some stuff, y'all. But if you have any questions, always leave them in the comments. What other things that or other topics you would like to hear, I will be glad to address them. And if you are interested in my, um, it's how to earn passive income online using digital products. You use your talents. I believe in, you know, you create a purposeful and a profitable online business and to help my faith fuel women out to use those gifts that God has put in you. So if you are interested in that, let me know. I want to thank you so much for staying until the end of this video and let me know if you have any questions. Happy new year. Bye.